Oh, I think, uh, sorry guys, that was my bad. Uh, <laughs> I didn't hit go live. I hit go live on all the other stuff, but the YouTube. So uh, let's start this again. Hey there, and welcome to Large Format Live. I'm your host, Matt Mirage, and uh, thanks everybody who's already patiently waiting and tuning in, all that good stuff. Uh, let's see, who do we got? Uh, who do we got hanging out with us right now? We have... We have quite a few folks. I see Devin, Eric, Mathieu, Carrie, Lore, uh, Jesse. Cool. So I got a I got a large uh, large amount of folks already already hanging in there. So thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, this is oh to call what I'm trying to do today ambitious is an understatement, but we're gonna see how it goes. Um, what I want to accomplish today, first of all, is a thank you to over 9,000 subs, which is just like mind boggling. Thank you so much for all of you who've uh, who tuned in from, you know, from day one, from early on in the channel. I didn't really have like much of a, a big overarching goal other than to, you know, put out stuff uh, that's large format and what I like to do and talking about printing and all that sort of good stuff. Let's check the chat here. Oh man, we got we have a lot of folks coming in. This is so, so, so cool. Anyway, um, this is here. I'm here to celebrate uh, 9K subs by streaming some darkroom printing to you live. And if you watch the little preview video, um, it's not just going to be like lights on darkroom streaming. This is going to be like darkroom, darkroom streaming that we're going to be doing. We're going to be printing live. And what we're going to be doing isn't going to be super expensive platinum palladium or cyanotype or anything. I want to try and pump out a good number of prints. Also, sorry about the audio. There's somebody uh, next door working power equipment because of course there is here at 400 West Rich in, uh, in Columbus, Ohio. Oh, very cool. This is cool. Andre, CM, RJM, Joel, Mark, Roberto. Oh man, we got, uh, we got lots of the, uh, RF, uh, we got a lot of the uh, One More Stop uh, Discord folks, so welcome everybody for tuning in. We have folks worldwide, oh my gosh, we have 38 people watching right now, this is crazy. Okay, so back to what we're going to be doing today. Uh, I'm going to try to give you a little tour of the camera setup that we have going on for the live stream, and I want this to be as open forum as possible when it comes to specifically darkroom printing. But of course, if you have large format questions, drop those in the chat. Because we're gonna be going dark, there's gonna be a few times where I'm gonna have limited access to the computer in the chat, but I do have uh, I do have an orange screen on everything. So we will be able to, uh, you will be able to uh, kind of have some back and forth uh, because yeah, everything is uh, safe lit now with all these gels. It's, uh, it's a madhouse in here. All right. We got folks from Ukraine, we got Michigan. Oh my, France. This is so cool. 40 up 44 viewers. Oh my gosh. All right. Uh goals. Let's see if we can get uh over 100 folks again. That'd be three streams in a row, which would be totally totally amazing. How are we doing on time? Oh, we're we're just getting started. This is awesome. Okay. So, let's I'm going to give you a tour of my incredibly incredibly small closet-sized darkroom up here at 400 West Rich. So we've got the main shot on me and that's so the doorway can light it up. This is my little Fuji, which is really, really not the greatest in low light. I can make it work, but it's not, mm, you know, it's got its, its issues. So I brought in a couple of heavy hitters so we can work under the safe light. So I'm gonna close the door and uh, turn the lights out so you guys can see what we're going to be doing live. And you're gonna see it live too. Okay, that's much darker now. See, the door is closed, but that's, uh, that's not all we're doing. I'm going to pop that down. We're going to cut to another angle that we have here. And this is my, my humble little print corner. This is not much of a darkroom space anymore. Uh, my buddy Steven Takis, who I've shared this space with for years, uh, actually has uh, a new and awesome darkroom that he's moved most of his stuff out to, uh, which included the enlarger. I'm not mad about it. It just kind of forces me to work with more, let's say, rudimentary tools. Um, back early, early in 2021, I did a video on how to do contact prints 
in a black and white darkroom setting without an enlarger. And that's what we're gonna be doing today. I'm gonna to be doing this very, very tiny bare bulb printing. You see this little guy right here? This is a Kodak seven watt bulb. It's absolutely adorable size. I have a contact print frame, which just is a fancy piece of glass with some foam under it to smush a negative in contact with a print. And then I have this light here tied to this Gray Lab darkroom timer. And what that's gonna allow me to do, uh, your Gray Lab timer, the big hand is minutes and the tiny hand is seconds. And if I just uh, turn this on for a minute, you'll see my adorable little light is actually gonna go off. It's, it doesn't look like much, I know, but it's going to be powerful. In fact, let me turn off the other main light we have in here. Oh, isn't that cool? We can still see each other. We can still talk about this stuff. That's because I am working with some absolutely monstrous low light beasts of a camera. Uh, I've got some, uh, some awesome Sony full frame cameras that are gonna allow me to show you uh, what's going on uh, during the contact printing portion of, uh, of this process. So we'll go ahead and end that. So when the timer goes, the light goes with it. And then we can mosey on over to the trays. And from the trays, we can watch as the print goes in from the developer. Uh-oh, that's empty. I gotta mix up some developer and put on some gloves. So then we'll go through the process of adding a developer, a stop bath, and a fixer, and then back on to the lights. So uh, we are we are literally darkroom printing live. Uh, it's amazing. It's amazing that we can do this. I'm gonna cut back to my first camera here and open the door so we can wrangle some chat and questions and stuff real quick. Uh, let's check and see how everybody's doing. Um, oh man, how's this chat doing? Oh my goodness. Oh man, we got 58 viewers now? Awesome. Okay. We got Netherlands, Clintonville. Okay, Westerville. All right, we got a big Columbus contingent going on here as well. Um, man, this is so cool. Th Cape Town. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for everybody who's tuning in. And um, as an extra, extra, extra little thing on top of uh, so I'm celebrating the 9K subs, um, I want to go ahead and give a quick shout out to the folks that allow this sort of thing to happen. That's viewers like you. When you're tuning into the, the channel, clicking through that skippable ad, that stuff helps me continue to, uh, to do the channel. So I appreciate everybody who's done that. Uh, by the way, I believe the chat is in subs only mode. You don't have to be subbed for long, but uh, if you go ahead and sub, you're gonna be allowed to comment in here. And I do have it in slow mode, so you know we can't like spam the chat too, too quickly, but I think it's a five or 10 second buffer. So don't worry about that too much. Um, but on top of the folks that just subscribe and watch the ads, we have some folks that go above and beyond, and those are our LFF sustaining members. You guys know who you are, you're awesome. If you wanna learn more about becoming a sustaining member for uh, Large Format Friday and the entire channel, you can head to mirage.com slash memberships for more information. Uh, that allows me to do stuff like rent out all of this crazy equipment. Uh, fingers crossed I'll be able to buy some of this stuff someday and do this on the regular for you guys because this is so amazing. Like. The technology on our cameras is so good that we're able to bring you these, you know, relatively primitive darkroom processes, but show you live and kind of educate on the fly. If you're just joining us, welcome to Large Format Live. My name is Matt Mirage. I'm the host of the Large Format Friday YouTube series, and we're here at 400 West Rich, and we're darkroom printing. We are making black, traditional black and white silver gelatin prints, uh, but we're not just making any type of prints. Whoa! Super chat just went in. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta address that. But I wanna show you what we are printing today. So recently I was gifted some really, really, really neat paper and I'm excited to share it and, uh, and actually offer some of the prints that I'm making today too. Today we're working with some Ilford Multigrade 4 postcard paper. This is just four by six portfolio silver gelatin paper but what makes it special is on the back side of it, there is postcard printing information. So you can send it to your friends. You can, you can mail it. And uh, one of the cool things about mailing stuff uh, here from the U.S. at least, uh, I have a boatload of forever stamps for sending letters to LFF sustaining members. And 
if you guys want some of the prints that I'm making here today on the show, those are going to be available. And I'm going to have Laura drop a link in the chat. You can go to mirage.com slash prints uh, and you can uh, you can throw in with, to support the channel and get yourself uh, a random print from what we're making today on the stream. Let me go grab an example print and then we got to jump, jump to the chat. Okay. So I have one print that I already made uh, just kind of as a tester. Um, so we're not doing full eight by 10 inch silver gelatin prints. I really wish I was, um, but this four by six postcard paper is great. Uh, and it's gonna just cost a forever stamp to send it in. And I, I'm making four by sixes from some of my eight by 10 inch negatives. So kind of a, a little crop of it. And you can see on the back, this is expired paper. So the postcard writing is kind of faint on it, uh, but it's, uh, that's what we're making today. And I'm, I'm kind of excited to, uh, to share this stuff with you guys. So. Um, if you have any questions along the way about the darkroom process, go ahead and drop that below in the chat because there's probably a lot of folks in there now that have some experience in the black and white darkroom, but I'll do my best to try and talk you through what we're doing here. We are making traditional prints. So this isn't uh, inkjet. This isn't any sort of digital print. This is analog as it gets. Well, kind of ironically, because we're using all of this crazy technology in order to show it to you, but we are making traditional black and white silver gelatin prints um, and you're watching it happen live. So we're gonna get to watch the magic happen. Watch this thing come up in the tray. Okay, let's hit up the chat real quick. All right, Jesse, thank you so much for the, uh, the $5 super chat. Guys, if you see highlighted uh, little chats in there, those are super chats. Those are donations that directly go to uh, the channel, and I thank you so much for that. Um, all right. Well, we're up to 73, folks. This is pretty sweet. All right. Zach, hello. Mike, hello from Newfoundland. Oh, my goodness. Um, oh, Eric, uh, thanks for the question. Uh, large format live will typically take place on Sundays at two. That's when the analytics says, uh, you guys are the most active and it kind of works for me too, cause I'm off on Sundays. So we'll keep that going until, uh, until we're not able to. Whoa. Okay. My chat is like highlighting. All right. Very cool. Whoa, 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 Devin there, S slow down. We haven't even started making prints yet, but I appreciate it. Thank you so much uh, for the $20 uh, super chat. That's amazing. And I wanna get to making some of these prints cause I wanna see if, if you guys can see the magic happen. Because I think if everybody experience, this is like my like my uh, my modus operandi for, uh, for doing this kind of large format live stream. I think if everybody gets to experience the magic of the picture coming up in the tray, just like watching it happen live, there's this moment where we light up. And for me, that moment has never stopped since the first time I watched a silver gelatin print come up in the tray. My first couple were ones where it came up and then it immediately went black because it was way too overexposed, but it's still a really, really amazing thing. All right, Graham, thanks for stopping in. Very cool. All right, so um, I'm going to, let's see, I'm gonna cut the lights uh, on the natural light. We're gonna jump to the trays view. I'm gonna mix up my developer. Hopefully you'll be able to see that pretty well. And we're going to, uh, yeah, we're gonna get going. All right, cool. So lights are out. We're gonna jump to camera three on the trays here. And if you've never done black and white silver gelatin printing, it's, uh, it's not too bad a stuff. The, the chemicals involved in it, a lot of the film photography chemicals are simple acid base chemistry. As long as you treat the stuff with respect, it's gonna respect you back. I'm putting on some nitrile gloves. I like these nitrile exam gloves. They don't have powder and they've got a nice little tooth or texture to them. So I find them pretty easy to work with. So what I'm going to do, I haven't mixed up my developer because it's pretty, pretty darn hot in here. Um, the developer that we're going to be using today is Ilford Multigrade Developer. This is uh, really, really great stuff. 
it keeps a pretty long time. This bottle is like almost a year old and it's, it's starting to lose its luster uh, print wise, but uh, you can mix this stuff up one plus nine uh, or one plus 14. That means one part of stock. Let me bring this up closer. That means you can mix it one part uh, stock and nine parts uh, water if you like. And um, that's how I'm gonna mix it for, uh, for today. But I'm not gonna mix it out of that bottle because that I mentioned that's like the old stuff. So I'm gonna find my other stuff right there, my multi-grade. I'm gonna get some water going because I need that. And I've got, these are a little postcard prints, so I don't need too much in the tray. I'm gonna mix enough for like a liter. So I'm gonna take 100 mils of my concentrate. So this is our uh, print developer. This is what's going to take that latent image that we form when we expose it. And that's gonna give us, um, it's gonna give us the right chemical environment, usually a heavy base environment. It's gonna give us the right environment to make, um, to make our print start, uh, start showing up. It's gonna convert the, the silver halide to a silver, uh, to a silver metal in the print. Now this uh, graduate I have is only 600 mils. So I'm gonna fill it up. I'm gonna dump it in my tray. I'll move the camera back. Whoop. Dump that in the tray. And I'm gonna add 400 more mils of water. It's recommended if you're mixing up chemicals in the dark room that you use a different uh, measuring tool or like graduated cylinder, bucket, <laughs> cup, what have you. Uh, whatever mixing tools you have, try to use only, uh, only that mixing tool for that, uh, that chemical. So developers uh, like having a, a relatively base environment. The stop bath is an acid. So um, yeah, if you mix the acid and base, you could neutralize the developer and it's no longer going to be active. Everything we're working on today is a chemical reaction. So that means everything has to occur at a specific time and temperature. The recommended temperature for a lot of these is 20 Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit. And for an RC print, anywhere between 60 and 90 seconds of developing time is all we're gonna need to make things happen. I'm gonna jump over to the chat because I'm seeing some activity over there. And then we're gonna jump right to some prints. All right. How we doing? Columbia, South Carolina. Colton, good to see you. Chopper, good to see you. Um, very, very cool. All right, Carl, welcome to the chat. Dave Nelson, Ilford items say Harmon on it. Is that like half of the old Harmon Carden? Um, I'm actually not sure, Dave. I don't think so, but uh, we'll, we'll see. Uh, Dave R, hey, uh, I'm happy to do this. This is, uh, this is all fun for me. Um, uh, Mark, those are eight by 10 trays that we're working in. Um, cool. All right, David, hey, welcome to, the, uh, welcome to the chat and welcome to Large Format Live. All right, let's head on over. I'm gonna switch my camera. Camera two, great. We're all set up over here. And uh, there's a variety of negatives uh, that I brought with me. I'm not like 100% on which one I want to work with. Uh, I tested, I think I only tested like two negatives last night. So this is going to be like a little bit of a, uh, a little discovery process as we go through this. Uh, but the first negative I have is actually one that I made um, last December in, in one of my field work episodes it's gonna be really really hard to see because it's just under the red light There's very little uh, well, this is um, a little on the thinner side negative But it's gonna print still very very well with this dim uh, 7 watt Kodak bulb and uh, for those of you uh, wondering I'm working with um, video LEDs, these are RGBWW LEDs, just meaning they have very precise RGB control. At the end of the day, what that means is they're very accurate and they can hold um, an accurate color pretty well and they're at the lowest setting. If I turn them up too high, I lose uh, safe working conditions. And there's really no such thing as a safe light. There's only an intensity and color of light that can hold off for long enough before we, uh, we miss the shot or any of that. And not miss the shot, but like fog up our paper. Um, I, did a, I did a classic test that you can do. Let me see if I got it in my pocket. I'm going to all these later today and I should have, there it is, yep. The best thing you can do is do what's called the quarter test. Take a quarter, throw it on your paper, 
and leave it there. If you have a couple quarters, uh, you can take one off every five minutes and this will test how safe your safe light is. Just let it out and expose on the emulsion side, which is usually the shiny side of your paper. And that will let you know if your paper is safe or not. Another hot tip from my professor, Jeff, the, uh, the same guy who coined the phrase, get a freaking tripod. And I've kind of made it my own ever since. All right, I'm gonna crack open the box of paper here. I'm gonna carefully remove a sheet. I still, even though I did the safe light test last night, healthy amount of distrust is a good thing in the darkroom. So I'm going to take out a piece of this paper. This is Ilford Multigrade Portfolio RC. All of that to say, it's thick, it's shiny, and it produces a pretty nice print. Now this is a little on the foggy, not foggy size, it's just like expired, so it's not going to have as much punch or D-Max maybe as we would get in a, um, in like a fiber print, but I still think it has, has a lot of merit. So now we can see what's going on. I'm laying my negative in contact and I want to kind of, every print's going to be a little bit different. Uh, that's going to be one of my big goals here. So I want to have some areas that are, are really transparent and I want to have some areas that are uh, very hard to see through. That's going to give me, uh, that's going to give me a nice dynamic looking print. And this is just a piece of glass with a little spring frame on it. And if I press down hard enough, I'll hear a click on this frame. Ooh, maybe not. <laughs> Maybe you're not going to hear the click today, but now all I'm going to do is I'm going to throw on the timer. I think 10 seconds was my target time for this kind of position it under my light bulb here. And I'm going to put on 10 seconds. Gonna dodge a little bit. Dodging is literally just helping lighten certain areas by rolling your hand over it. There we go. Cool. I'm going to give it another second. Cool. Okay. I'm going to take my exposed print out. We can't see anything yet because we have to develop it out. Now, the reason we can do this under a safe light is this paper is what's known as orthochromatic. It can't see red light, and that's what I have my LEDs set to. It's almost like an orange red, but that's okay. That's still a safe enough light. Some lights have just the right amount of yellow that you can get a brighter exposure, uh, but your paper will usually fog faster when that happens. So we're going to change the camera and we're going to develop out our print. I also got to turn my Gray Lab timer on. There we go. I'm just going to let that kind of going to run free. Okay, great. Now that my camera's changed over, I'm going to plop in a print. Got my tongs here. All right, let's see the magic. There it comes. Oh, isn't this cool? Oh man, 10 seconds might've been too aggressive. That's okay. I can always make another print. I got lots of this postcard paper. Oh yeah, that's a little on the dark side. So we're probably gonna go, hmm. Well, we'll evaluate it with the, uh, well, maybe not with the light on. We'll just keep rolling with some prints. Okay, we've got, got a little bit more time yet. It's really tempting to want to take the print out as soon as you see it come to what you think it should be, but you always want to go that controlled amount of time. So in, in my case, we're going to go 60 seconds. Um, that 60 seconds is just going to assure that I've given it the total amount of time it needs. And I'm just kind of moving it around. You can rock the tray up and down. I'm using the tongs so I can touch things like my computer and other electronics. And drip this off and slap it into the, the stop bath. And you can see here in the stop, it's just hanging out for a few seconds. Drip it off and I'll throw it into the fix. Okay. And in the fixer, it needs to be here at least a minute before I can turn my lights up. And you know, I might not even turn the lights up. I might just like put a, uh, put like a print or something on. Uh, am I zoomed all the way in? Yeah, I'm zoomed all the way in. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, what's, uh, what's the chat out to? Whoa, 92. We got quite a folks, quite a few folks coming in there. Um, Oh man. Okay. 
So uh, I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna let the other lights, uh, the other light go live. Uh, but before I do, it's always a good idea to check that all of your light sensitive materials, like your photo paper, is put away. I've ruined a lot of paper this way. All right, let's turn the light on. And hopefully we can see a little bit more of this print. And you know what? Um, I think, I think it actually looks pretty cool. Light areas are still nice and light. The dark areas have gone quite, quite, quite dark, but we've got, uh, we've got some nice, some nice tonality going on. I like contrasting uh, the print in a white tray so we can really, really, really see it. But yeah, let's take a look. That looks pretty cool. I'm liking these prints. Oh man. Okay. I'm going to make one more, maybe at like eight seconds and do a little bit more dodge in these lighter areas. Again, dodging is moving my hand in front of it to make the light areas even lighter or just to make an area lighter. Burning is just letting light hit an area for longer uh, than it needs to. And that's where the dodge and burn tools came for, uh, came from in Photoshop. Okay. How's chat looking? Hey, I see James Pearson. Very cool. Okay. Joe, how's it going? Very cool. Andre from New York. Good to see you. Oh man, this is so cool. Yeah, I think we, I think we've got it. I think we can hit, I think we can hit a hundred. Let's keep it going folks. Also, if you know somebody who's never done silver gelatin printing before, send this stream to them. I want to like share the magic of the darkroom with as many people as possible. All right. So we're going to jump to our second, our, our second camera here. I'm going to take another seat and we're going to load up another print. Let's do it. We got a, well, we got 98 more sheets. Let's, uh, let's burn some. That's the other reason I wanted to do silver gelatin printing. As much as I loved doing the platinum palladium, I do understand that it's, it's a more expensive and less accessible process. I'm in the dark room right now. I'm literally using a teeny tiny light bulb that's seven watts. Uh, you might not even have LEDs that are low enough in power. I'm using a seven watt LED, a gray lab timer, which I found used for about 30 bucks. Uh, and you don't even have to use like this fancy photo glass. You can use like a pane of glass or, uh, or plexi. That would be enough to do it. Okay. So I've got this and we're going to go, we're going to call this eight seconds. All right. Oh, false start. And I'm just going to dodge a little bit, dodge a little bit here. Very cool. And yeah, just a little right there. Okay. Oh my goodness. I apologize if you hear a rumbling coming from next door. Literally, like somebody is tearing apart walls. And of course, it was happening the same day as the live stream. But let's get this over to the developer and take a look. All right. Move it over here. Okay. Drop it in. The key to dropping this in, uh, some folks will drop it in on its face and then flip it over. Just keep the print moving. That's the biggest thing. If you let it sit there, it could like stale out. It, it just might not have the same, it, the chemicals might hit it at different intervals and you might not develop certain areas to completion. And we don't want that to happen. We want to, we want to see a print come up. Oh yeah. That dodging is definitely having a little bit more effect. I put my finger over here for a little bit longer uh, than I did in the last print and it's definitely showing. I think eight seconds is the right amount. Now, a lot more of my negatives that I'm working with are going to take considerably longer than, um, than this because this was on the thinner side, but uh, I've got some tips and tricks for um, changing my exposure a little bit more in those other ones. Now, you know, why am I doing four by six prints? It feels like, feels kind of like a waste. <laughs> Um, with eight by 10 negatives, but it gives me the full bleed, which is pretty nice. I, I might like to do borders if I do this again, but I would have to have an enlarger. And I'm trying to prove that you can do this with relatively inexpensive, uh, nearly free materials uh, when it comes to the dark room. And that's my other big tip for the dark room. If you can, don't pay for, <laughs> don't pay for dark room stuff. Cause for every person that's like interested in dark room, there's usually a bunch more folks that are getting out of it, going to give it away, that sort of thing. So I'm going to move this into the fixer, but let me know in the chat what you think. How's this second print? You like the first print better? Do you like the second print? Uh, let me know. And this will give me time to, uh, to wrangle questions and stuff in the chat. Bruno from Mexico. Good to see you. Uh, let's see. James from Indiana. Very cool. Welcome to the channel and uh, glad to see you're getting into large format. Okay. 
Steven Lawson, good to see you. Yeti over in Germany, thanks for stopping by. Jeremy from from Massachusetts, very cool. Yeah, I, I now realize I'm competing with the Olympics, which is like kind of a fool's game. You can't compete with one of the biggest sporting events in the world that happens only every four years. All right, anyway, let's flip a light on. Take a look at this second print. See everything goes. Oh, I definitely like this lighter, dreamier kind of aspect that's going on. This is a lot closer to the original uh, scans and prints I had on the negative. Now, my view of this particular print is a little bit jaded because I am so, so used to how it looks printed on fiber paper. And I'm not trying to sound like a snob. I just, I mean, those are the prints I usually sell on the website are fiber-based prints. And they have higher DMAX, which just means they have brighter, uh, they reflect more light. They've got brighter whites and deeper blacks. And that's because it's on a thicker paper base, which this is already a pretty thick base, but it is resin coated or RC paper, which means there's more plastic in it. These prints can dimple and they generally start to not fade, but like they degrade a little bit faster. We're talking like 25, 30 years versus 50 to 75 years. Um, but yeah, that's, I, I'm gonna chalk this one up to, I like this print. So I'm gonna take it out of the fix, drop it into my, my wash and we're going to do a couple more of this one i'm going to try to refine the dodge and burn a little bit on the next steps so i'm going to shift my camera Oop, right over here and we're going to check on the chat 95 we're almost there guys let's hit let's hit triple digits today i think we can do it all right colton thanks for the compliment man uh i yeah i really like uh that's that negative um uh let's see Oh, Joe, a uh, good question. I'm using Ilford Multigrade. Um, I'm also using Ilfo Stop. Oh, yeah, I guess I am. I'm using 100% Ilford today. I didn't even realize it until you asked me. Um, I usually mix my own uh, my own fixer from scratch because a few years back, I got... Well, actually, I'll just show you guys. So one thing that I think I want to get more into on the channel or maybe like a sub portion of the channel is talking about um, the chemicals. Like... Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not the, the manufacturer of these chemicals, but I have made a couple of my own home brews um, in, you know, uh, in my time doing this. And a few years back, I inherited a large photo formulary from a, a professor, a former professor uh, in Cincinnati. And he was gracious enough to gift me a bunch of stuff, including um, pounds and pounds of uh, hypocrystals or sodium theosulfate crystals. This is like the easiest thing to mix ever. You just weigh out the right amount. So you get your little scale, little $10 Amazon scale, and you weigh out uh, the right amount per liter, which I think is like, I can't remember how many grams per liter it is anymore. I think I want to say it's like, I want to say it's like 60 or 75, but you, anyway, you, you weigh out the right amount of theosulfate and you just keep on swirling it. And these are like these little fatter crystals. And then that's it. Your fixer, it, this, you have, you have like, a modern non-hardening fixer, which is kind of kind of great to work with. Um, anyway, let's get back to printing. I'm going to do one more of the trees here, try to refine it, and uh, then we'll switch up negatives. Remember, if you want one of the prints that you're seeing made live here today, you can head to mirage.com slash prints. I'm also having a print sale until the end of July, so there's a lot of prints they're on sale and if you're an lff sustaining member uh, you're going to have a unique coupon code that's available to you until the end of july to save a little bit of bonus percent as a thank you for uh yeah for keeping the channel going and having me doing this crazy stuff live so i'm going to turn the light off here uh do my final checks make sure there's no other light sources man my switcher is glowing so 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 bright and i can see on the far side of the room i see a super chat i see you i appreciate you and i will i will name you uh, as soon as i get back over to that side uh, so we're going to open our prints uh, this is okay so i don't know if i've mentioned this before if i have tell me to shut up in the chat but i had a dream about doing something like this uh, just over four years ago. And I did do, a, I have done a black and white printing live stream before, but it actually took a small crew of four people to wrangle the thing. This is literally a one man band that you're watching right now. And it's it's what I've always wanted. I'm, I'm instructing, well instructing, I'm kind of guiding people 
through this very simple but incredibly pleasing process of making black and white contact prints while at the same time just like yeah doing the thing i would do if there was no camera on me and that's what i think is amazing about uh, about the technology we have today i'm going to give a little bit less i'm going to put a little bit less of the trail in the shot and try to show a little bit more of the white areas which are going to be the areas that are look black against the paper okay now um, you might be wondering wait is he just doing straight prints and the answer is well kind of uh, i am doing a little bit of dodge and burn and stuff but when you have a film that you've tested a camera who, uh, that you're used to working with and other materials like your developer that are very calibrated into how you like to work you can produce negatives that will print very very easily they'll scan easily and if you use certain developers like i'm using the pyrocat hd you'll also have ones that can make alternative contact prints easily as well all right so we arrived at eight seconds so i'm going to put it on eight and i'm going to dodge these highlights a little bit and I'm gonna dodge that cool all right all right let's develop this out switch it to the next camera all right print i'm going to flip it in paper side first make sure it all hits at the same time and we're going to watch it come up it always no it's almost like a usb no matter what side i put it in it's always going to be upside down all right there we go oh yeah there we go oh, this is like i've probably made i probably made over a thousand prints in the darkroom and it, like it's still magic like i know exactly what's going on in the process and it's still amazing i love it i i want everyone to experience this and that's another part of the reason i'm doing uh, the live stream today is I, I want people to see this if you don't have access to a rental darkroom or you don't even have a space that you can set up at home for this at least i can share the experience with you guys but really you, you don't need much I, I know there's some folks on the uh, the one more stop discord channel that are printing in like closets with like really tiny enlargers and stuff and they're they're running on carts you can run a really lean mean uh, darkroom printing setup uh, you just have to usually check it with your significant other first to make sure uh, that's all good all right i'm done developing throw that in the stop i'm just going to stop it real quick only needs about 10 seconds in the stop we just don't want to go directly from developer to fix you can get some weirdness that way i'm going to move the camera over this way and then i'm going to uh yeah talk to the chat see how everything's going whoa we we are now over 100 folks thank you so much uh joe thank you for the five dollars i really appreciate it uh <laughs> uh, Josh P, uh, thank you. The hair is uh, is part of the channel. It's as much a part of the channel as Lord Format itself. Um, uh, Joe also asked, can you still get D76 or Dectol? Uh, for the longest time, those were not... Uh, oh, let me flip the print for everybody at home. Sorry about that. For the longest time, Kodak was back-ordered, and it was because they were changing... Uh, suppliers for chemicals. I don't know if it was suppliers or distributors, but anyway, they had a changeover uh, during the pandemic last year, and that ended up um, kind of gumming up uh, supply for a while. So they were out of uh, Dectol, D76, and a lot of stuff, but they are back up and running now. All right. Perfect. Let's see. Uh, Chopper says, I'd, I would enjoy more people talking about the disposable of alternative printing chemicals. So, uh, Chopper, that is kind of the million dollar question. And um, I would say, since it is not this large commercial endeavor like it has been in yesteryear, um, the amount, the, the impact is less, but it is still an impact. Um, I reserve all of my fixer and dispose of it properly. Oh, I'm, I'm really liking this print. I, I think the heavier Dodge and the slightly different composition really lends itself well to this particular print. This is going to be a good one. All right. Excellent. All right. I lied. I'm going to make one more of the trees and then we're going to change our negative. We'll test a new negative and go from there. Um, but yeah, the disposing of chemicals is, uh, is kind of, kind of chancy. Um, developer and stop, they neutralize each other and it's not, uh, not too terrible. Those, uh, those can get, uh, can go into the water supply. Um, if you have a well, if you have a well or septic system, 
Um, you can actually still put uh, developer and stop in there. Fix is the only one that you don't really want to add into circulation because Fixer works by remaining, uh, by, by taking out the remaining silver halides. So um, that's why we can't turn the lights on until it's done fixing, because if we didn't, we would actually have, uh, we'd have like a black print. We wouldn't have any other information there. So I'm going to put this in the wash, make one more print like that. Uh, but when I'm done collecting this, in fact, I'm going to change the camera angle and show you how we, col uh, we collect it here in the darkroom. Uh, I just have this giant, ooh. I got this big old tub, a used fix. When that gets full, uh, there's a place uh, north northeast of here that I take the fixer. Um, since it's not household chemicals, I think there's a there's a relatively small disposal fee, but it's kind of the cost of doing business. I won't I won't fill up that much fixer within I don't know within five or so years time. So it's it's relatively. Um, inexpensive compared to the opportunity cost of not being able to make prints. Um, all right. Oh, I don't know what the flickering was. Oh, I think I stepped on a cable accidentally. Whoops. Sorry about that, guys. For the flicker. Oh, man, we, we hit 100 and then we, we jump back down. Let's see if we can keep 100 folks going um, on the chat. Let's sustain it. Um, oh, Graham, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. All right. Aaron L., that's a perfectly suitable darkroom space. All right. Uh, Eric asks, is there any point in, to reclaiming the silver? If you are doing a lot, a lot of black and white film developing and printmaking, there is a point to reclaiming the silver because it's that's money in the bank. Um, now, SRUs or silver rec reclamation units uh, are still pretty expensive, but if you're doing... Well, I don't even know who's doing the kind of shooting that, that may need an SRU because even some labs don't use like a full SRU, but uh, they, those use like a, a plating system. So, um, you know, there's, a, there's an anode and a plate and it pulls that silver onto it. And after, you know, several hundred sheets uh, or several hundred prints, you're going to get teeny little, teeny little granular metals of silver that you can then uh, refine and, uh, and sell. So that's, there is a point to, to doing that sort of, uh, of work. Okay, I'm gonna do one more of this print and then we'll have, a, we'll have a little chat, we'll go lights on and jump to the next, uh, the next negative. I'm not sure what's going on with the, uh, the stream. I'm seeing some blinking coming over from my computer and I hope everything is okay. Hopefully it's not like overheating or anything. I am, I'm asking it to do a lot. So it's not impossible, anyway. I'm going to frame up my negative. I really liked where I had it framed last time. Just this little indication of the trail right here with this. Actually, um, right about there. I don't want to have too many blank lines toward the edge of the frame. I think that could really take away from what we're trying to do in the print. Let's actually bring it yeah, right there. Okay. That's why I had to say random prints on the, uh, on the listing on the website because yeah each print's going to be slightly slightly different we're going to go eight seconds again and this time actually let's let's pop that frame down come on patterson there we go all right that one's all good we're going to do eight seconds perfect okay let's pop this take out our print And let's go develop. Get over here. All right, let's throw in our prints. Now, I didn't throw that one in face down, so we might see some slightly uneven development to start, but that's only one second out of the full, full development time, so I'm not too worried. There it is, upside down again. I'm just really good at doing it upside down. There we go. Pictures coming in. Corners are looking a little bit darker. I think I should have dodged a little bit more up here in these trees just to kind of give me some uh, some extra extra difference because it, it almost looks like this side, the right side of the print, has a little bit more like just a little deeper weight to it. And I don't know how much I'm all about that, how close that tree is, but 
this is all an experiment. We're all having fun with this. Whoa, 98, come on, keep it going. We're almost at 100 viewers. This is sweet. Um, thank you so much for joining. By the way, if this is your first time uh, stopping by, welcome to Large Format Live. I'm your host, Matt Mirage. We're here in the black and white dark room up at 400 West Rich, and we have the red lights on because we are actually doing real black and white silver gelatin prints. We just exposed the print. It just developed for a minute. We're going to put it in our stop bath, which is a mild acid. You could actually use citric acid as a stop bath. There we go. Drip that off. Only 10 seconds in the stop bath. And then we're going to drop it into our tray of fixer for 60 seconds. After 60 seconds in the fixer, it is going to be light safe enough that we can flip on the lights and take a look. Ah, oh, you know what? No, this, this print looks pretty good. It's a smidge darker, maybe like a half second darker than the last exposure, but it's looking pretty, pretty good. All right. Bruno, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate you being here. All right, Yeti asks, question the lights in the fixer, would it only turn black in the developer? Um, actually, it will. Um, silver gelatin paper is really interesting. If you just give it enough light, it will start to develop out on its own because that halide um, is forming a latent image. But if you give it more and more and more exposure, it'll actually start to develop it out naturally. That's what happens when people do like pinhole cameras um, and they set them up in nature. You can actually leave that pinhole camera on for, uh, not on, but you can leave that pinhole camera open and exposing photo paper for days, weeks, sometimes even months on end. And what'll happen is the paper will develop out and it won't just look black and white. It'll start to get all these really crazy cool colors because it's interacting with the moisture and the, the pressure in the environment. And it just gives you this really, really dreamy image. But that looks, yeah, I like that one. That looks pretty good. Uh, so we're gonna leave the lights on. I'm gonna change out to my next negative, check and see if my glass needs cleaned and do a little bit of chat, a little chat maintenance. Talk to, talk to you guys here. All right. Very, very cool. Uh, Jeremy asks, hey, welcome, Jeremy. Uh, have you talked about dry down? Um, dry down is, uh, so I haven't, Jeremy. Dry down is the, the notion that when a print has, actually, let me move my camera angle here. Whoop two prints so we can we can actually like see some of the stuff we've made already so dry down is the notion that as a print dries it's going to lose some of its luster its brilliance uh, the whites might get dimmer and the blacks might just get duller um, i think dry down is significantly more pronounced in a higher dmax material like uh, like fiber-based paper, especially like fiber-based matte paper, I think just like drops off a cliff when it's no longer wet. Um, but glossy surface papers do have a slight dry down. This RC portfolio paper, even though it is glossy, it does kind of dry to a satin-ish feel. Um, and it doesn't lose too much from where, where we were originally. So I don't think these particular postcards are going to suffer from it as much as say like a fiber print, but it does happen. Um, I think this, Everybody has like their own calculated amounts. It's somewhere between like 10 and 15% um, is kind of what happens to your highlights in dry down. And uh, there's one of the old Ansel Adams documentaries where uh, he has a microwave. He takes a little test strip with the black and white and throws, literally throws it in like an old, you know, like an old 60s microwave and, uh, and kind of cooks the print to dry, which if you do that, please don't cook food in it anymore. But yeah, that's, uh, that's dry down. Okay, I'm gonna change my camera angle back to, uh, you have to do the sound effects when you move the camera. It's a rule, guys. Okay, so I'm gonna move the camera back to that angle. Uh, 104 people tuning in. Thank you for tuning in to Large Format Live. We're doing black and white silver gelatin printing completely live using uh, a crazy amount of technology that only started existing last year during the pandemic. So thank you so, so much for tuning in. Um, let's see. Um, uh, RJM, uh, the uh, the holder I'm using, actually, let me go grab it. The holder I'm using is like a Patterson branded one. This was, I think this one might even be Stevens. It's probably not even mine, but it is, it is Patterson branded. It's, 
it's just a piece of glass. Like you can literally use any thick pane of glass that you like. Mine's even dirty. See those? I gotta clean off those, those little fingerprints. But yeah, you can use any glass to smush it down. There's foam underneath it, so we don't actually like kink the negative or press too hard. That's kind of nice, I guess, but like, I, I kind of have a rule and that's what I'm trying to showcase with this. Don't go out buying expensive specialty photo stuff because for every, uh, every like photo specialty person that wants something, there's probably like an everyday tool that costs near like nothing compared to the photo specialty version of it. Um, let's see. Let's see, uh, Samuel, any advice on making large prints like 16 by 16 or 20 by 20 without an expensive easel? Um, Samuel, yes, uh, I learned this tip a few years back. Actually, let me change my camera angle so I can kind of address the camera. Uh, but that is a great question, Samuel. Um, I watched a, uh, a series of videos that was, um, oh, let me, my timer's like, oh, it's just buzzing. Turn that buzzing, like very, very faint buzzing. Um, I watched a series of videos by a fantastic alternative process and ultra large format photographer. His name is Mr. Jim Fitzgerald. Uh, if you haven't seen his work, uh, Jim Fitzgerald, he do, he's out in, uh, is out in California, I believe, like Redwoods kind of area. And he does these amazing like 14 by 17 and 16 by 20 uh, pictures. And his, his thing is carbon printing, which is a different type of alternative process. But in his carbon printing, he used this really, really unique framing system for uh, pouring out this, uh, this gelatin onto paper and he used um, a, a like a, a sheet like a sheet stock of metal and he used uh, magnetic stripping so you can use uh, just a like a ferrous a ferrous metal that you can keep relatively clean or some sort of magnetic flat surface and little magnetic strips to hold the paper down um, that's also going to be useful if you're doing very very large prints on like a horizontal type enlarger so not all enlargers are just up shining down some are you know horizontal they're shining out onto a large surface and magnets will hold everything very very nicely down tight okay so we've uh, we've milked a little bit of this guys if you want to buy some of the prints that i'm making here live today you can head over to mirage.com prints the postcards are available for uh 10 uh, 10 us dollars with a dollar shipping domestic in the us and two dollars shipping international can't beat it all proceeds go to support the channel um, if you're already a large format Friday sustaining member. Um, you also have a discount code that you can combine with that for an even cheaper than $10 postcard print. So yeah, check those out. Uh, let's see, next negative. Uh, this was, oh, this is like, this negative is like super, super dense, super thick compared to the previous negative. I might do that one, but let's do, uh, let's see, what else did I bring here today to print? Oh yeah, that one's, uh, that's really dense too. It's another one of my Cedar Falls negatives. Guys, if you wanna see how I made a lot of these negatives, most of the negatives I'm printing today were actually made during Large Format Friday. So if you go to the Fieldwork playlist on the channel, if you haven't subscribed yet, definitely check that out. But you can go to the Fieldwork playlist and check out, ooh, this is gonna be a fun one. This is actually one I made a couple years back. Anyway, uh, you can go to the Fieldwork playlist and watch how I make these in the field. I kind of talk you through the process. It's kind of like what I'm trying to do here, uh, but in the dark. So this is a landscape I made at the uh, Mohican State Nature Preserve. This was actually during one of my fall trips uh, in the field work, early on in the field work series last fall. And this one is like a very, it's like almost abstract looking. Um, it's just like a very long shot of these trees with all of these different values along it. I think it's gonna look really good um, as a black and white print. Now, uh, ballparking it, I think we need about eight, 10 seconds of exposure. So we're gonna start with eight seconds and see how it looks. So I'm gonna cut the lights and we're gonna make another print. I see we just dipped below 100 folks. RIP the stream. Let's see if we can keep it going. I wanna see us hit over 100. Okay. Getting some paper out. Uh, another thing about keeping uh, gloves on and keep and using tongs and doing all that sort of clean stuff with the, um, with the paper is you're going to, uh, if you don't keep clean hands, you don't wash things off and use tongs a lot, you're gonna get fixer fingers and fixer fingers uh, can harm, potentially harm negatives, but they can also just completely uh, ruin prints. And nobody, I don't think anybody wants that. They don't set out looking to ruin prints. So I'm just looking for a cool framing. I know my initial like uh, composition, you know what? I might even do a vertical. Nope, horizontal. 
I'm a landscape guy. I gotta do landscapes. Um, I think, I think I'm gonna keep it right there. Frame it up. All right. Move my framing. Pushing my negative right, I think right there looks pretty good. That's the cool thing about contact prints of a smaller size. You just kind of make it what you want. All right, let's go eight seconds. I'm gonna dodge this a little bit. All right, let's head to the sauce. Oh man, we're making so many more prints than we did during the alternative printing episode. This is the kind of stuff I like. All right, we have our print, but nothing is coming up on the print because we have just exposed it, forming a latent image. When I plop it into the developer, it's in a high pH or basic environment uh, with the developer, which the active ingredient is called metal. That is going to start this fun little chemical reaction at the right temperature and the right time and the right concentration where it's going to magnify my image and it's going to come up. But enough, enough talking, I'll shut up and slap it in. All right, it's face down, flip it up. This time I'm going to rock the tray, just for fun. Oh, here it comes. Oh. Now this one's kind of flat. Womp womp. Big time womp action on this one. Oh my goodness. So one downside to bare bulb printing, one huge downside to bare bulb printing is I'm using a type of paper called multigrade. So it has, it's a variable contrast paper. Well, how do you change the contrast on a paper that's, uh, that's getting light from a bare bulb? It's an uphill battle is, is the answer. It's not, uh, not very easy to do. Okay, let's see, how is, all right, how's everything going? I just got, just got a bunch of little, Notifications. Let me check and see. Okay. All right. Just want to make sure my audio hadn't cut out or anything. Cool. A couple extra seconds and the developer won't kill it. Just don't want to go too far over like 90 seconds. All right. Stop the action of this. But anyway, um, this print is quite flat and quite dark. I can attempt to bring this up. Uh, by using some contrast filtration. So changing uh, the type of light that this print receives. So obviously we're under a red light. That's why you guys can see what's happening. But our prints to change the look, to change the contrast coming out of them, they have, um, they're multi-grades because they're sensitized to uh, blue and green wavelengths of light. The more blue light they receive, the more black and white we get, the more like deep, rich black and bright, crisp white. The more green light the print receives, the more of these grays they get. And you see how this is like super, super gray compared to those other, uh, that last negative we had? This is a different film. This is HP5 versus that Delta 100 that we meticulously tested and printed with uh, over the course of the last few months on the channel. So that's why there's a difference here. But I can attempt to control the color of light coming into this print uh, to make it pop a little bit more. And I, I might do that. I've got, uh, I actually did bring some multi-grade contrast filters with me in an attempt to, uh, to help it out. All right, I'm gonna turn the, the lights on, do a little chat maintenance, say hi, how are yous, and uh, see how everything else is going. Fena, welcome to the chat. All right. Larry, you made a filter holder for the bear bulb. That's a really, really great idea. Okay, let's take a look at our, our, our flatty pancake print here. So by flat, I mean there's just low, low contrast. There's nothing that's crisp white and nothing that's deep black. I think the only thing we could do to try to help this is to use a very, very high grade of contrast, like a, uh, like a number four filter or something of the like, to try and just kind of pop things. It'll make the darks darker and the lights a little bit lighter and less of that kind of middle gray. Now, I'm gonna hunt around. Let's see, where's my filters? There they are. I just so happened to bring with me a couple of multi-grade contrast filters. I brought a number four and I brought a number three. Uh, basically, the higher up the grade counts on there, the 
um, the more contrasty the picture is going to be. And the color difference in these, it's kind of hard to tell, but uh, this one's got a little bit more red to it. This one's got a little bit more uh, orange to it. Um, so, hmm, yeah, I think I'm gonna do a number four filter and see if I can make that, uh, make that work for this print. And I can actually just, yeah, I can just hold this over the light. That should be enough to do it. Let's cut, I'm gonna cut the main light, change the camera angle. Hey, we're back over a hundred folks. Uh-oh, what happened to the live stream? Uh-oh, hopefully, uh... Stream, where are you at? Oh no, stream, come back. Stream, you back? Okay, cool. I don't know why we, we almost lost, uh, lost co uh, connection there. Um, okay, back to Q&A. Sorry for the hiccup, guys. Uh, Dave asks, how many prints can I make with the tray of chemicals? Uh, that tray is gonna do about 40 eight by 10 prints, and these are four by six prints, so it's probably gonna be like 60, 75 prints, or, um, or four hours, whatever happens first. I'm gonna change the camera angle real quick, make sure all my cameras are woken up. Okay, good, I got the other angle going on there. I'm gonna turn my light off. All right. And what I'm gonna test here real quick is I'm gonna place, drop that number four filter. I'm just gonna hold it over top. Let's see if that actually, oh yeah. Yeah, that should do it. Who needs a filter holder? I got a hand, I can push that over. Hey, we're still over a hundred folks. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Welcome to Large Format Live. I'm your host, Matt Marash. We're here in the dark room at 400 West Rich. We're doing silver gelatin contact printing. I'm on the second negative. I had a pretty crappy flat first print. Don't worry. If you do buy a print, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to sell uh, that really, really flat one. That's like not my best work. Uh, but hopefully if I can get a good print out of this, I'll throw that one up for sale. They're available for $10 at mirage.com slash prints. So you can check those out. Um, again, thank super, super thank you to everybody who's, uh, stayed with us so far. Uh, we're, I think we're just over an hour in or almost an hour in. Yeah. So thank you so, so much. Um, okay. So I've got my paper. I've got my negative over top my paper. I've got my light. I'm going to hold my filter very carefully here like so. Uh, maybe I'll just hold it with this hand. There we go. And we're gonna go, gonna go about 10 seconds. Uh, you do have to compensate for your filter. Um, about one stop is what somebody told me in the chat. Um, I might even do, I might even do 12 seconds. There we go. I'm just gonna dodge this area a little bit. There we go. And hopefully this number four really gives us some, uh, some pops, some contrast coming in there. Cool. All right, let's take a look. Change our camera angle. Whoa, is that a super chat I see? Oh my gosh, Devin, you're doing you're doing all the heavy lifting for everybody else here in the chat, but I appreciate it. Ten dollars, over a hundred percent. Yeah, we've uh, we're we're putting numbers up today. I really really appreciate everybody who's tuning into the channel. This is you guys are kind of making a a long form dream of mine come true in in large format. I've wanted to be able to do this kind of stuff with the technology for the longest time. Anyway, I'm going to take this first print out of the fix because uh, there is such a thing for fixing as like way, way, way too long, but a couple extra minutes isn't gonna kill your print. All right, slap that one in, flip it around. All right, let's see if the number fi four filter was the right amount. Too much, not enough. I might need more exposure on it too, but let's take a look. Oh, here it comes. Oh, it's a different picture. Isn't that crazy? Like I just put a, a thin piece of plastic over a light. Okay, I definitely need a little bit more exposure, but like, that's it. I just like, it's such simple. There's so many simple little tools and pieces of technology going on here. Uh, you know, primitive compared to what uh, what's helping bring the stream to you guys live, but it's it's magic. This is the magic of the darkroom. I think everybody needs to experience this. Yes, I definitely need more time. I could probably go with, uh, I might even just jump to a number three filter here, 
the four might be too aggressive. Um, and what I'm also going to do is, no matter what, I'm going to give this more exposure. Oh, this is so cool. All right, I'm going to drippy drip. Throw this into the stop. Change the camera angle. Whoop. Drip, drip, drip into the fix. Let's move it on over. And guys, um, if you're just tuning in, this was the first print we made, and that's the second print we made. And all we did was change the uh, change the filter and add a few more seconds. I could I could go with even more. Uh, even more time. So this is this is the magic of the black and white darkroom. I'm not even making <laughs> I'm not even making like good prints right now. I'm just like uh, excited that it's working. Like it just I think that's what's so cool. There's this huge disconnect between what's uh, what we're we're used to experiencing on like the back of an LCD screen, and it's just like it's real. It's here. It's happening. It's so cool. Whoa! Super chat's popping off. Um, Eric, thanks for the five. Jay, thank you so much for the five. Oh, and thank you guys so much for tuning in to Large Format Live. This is live darkroom printing. I, I know, I, I'm probably just too excited about this, but this is stuff that just, just like physically couldn't happen a few years ago, and now I'm able to share this with you guys. It's so, so cool. Okay, we're definitely a little on the light side. I think the contrast filter's right. I think we're just gonna keep pumping it with some extra exposure. So uh, we were at 12-ish seconds. We're gonna go to like 16, 17. I'm gonna leave that one in the fix so we have a little comparative analysis for the next uh, the next print. Um, let's check the uh, check the old chatty chat. Um, let's see. Yeti, thanks for stopping in. Thanks for the, the questions. I really appreciate it. Um, Robert, I use a P67 as a doorstop. That's perfect. It's they are chunky, chunky cameras. Oh man, thank you so much for everybody tuning in. Um, uh, Ash, question: are, are you going to use any toner today? This is RC portfolio paper. I don't find the, the RC papers take a lot of the toner. So one thing that impacts how much or how uh, little the toner affects the print is the thickness of the emulsion. And when you use a black and white paper like RC paper, they have a relatively thin emulsion. There's not a lot of, there's not a lot of meat to it. In fact, RC, uh, all black and white photographic papers only work when you can give them, oh, come on camera, get me, there we go. This Sony's supposed to have the best autofocus. What's going on? Anyway. Um, Black and white papers are actually very, very thin. You can, you can see through them. Light can shine through them very easily. They're meant to have light reflect off of them. And if you hold an RC print up to the light, it looks like this like tan brownish kind of thing. It doesn't, it doesn't sing because you're not hitting it with light to have it reflect back into your eye. And the thicker paper base uh, with the barium sulfate coating and just a thicker emulsion of fiber papers, those are going to give you more of that light back and they're going to be a slightly denser emulsion. That denser emulsion, I think, takes a toner a lot better. So toning an RC print might get you a slight, a slight shift, but nowhere near as dramatic or as permanent the shift that you're going to get with a a toned fiber print. So I hope that helps answer the question. Um, anyway, we're gonna keep uh, we're gonna keep the filters going. We're gonna pop just short of 20 seconds in for this uh, this print. Man, we got there in a couple sheets of paper, which is really really neat. Uh, this postcard paper is is precious, and I probably shouldn't be blowing too much of it because I don't know what kind of response the $10 prints are gonna get from you guys. By the way, if you're just tuning in, uh, I am here live making prints in the darkroom, traditional black and white prints. These ain't ink jets. They're not dye subs. They are RC portfolio paper prints. And if you want one of the ones, one of the good ones I make here today, you can head over to mirage.com slash prints and uh, you can pick one up. They're $10 USD, $1 shipping in the US and $2 shipping international because I'm gonna send them as literal postcards. So we're gonna go just short of 20 seconds. Whoop. Do, 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 do. Sorry, I don't have anything to comment. I'm just like, 
focusing, like hyper focusing on the print. Oh man. It's one thing to like print and just be kind of like mellow and chill, but another thing to try and like <laughs> explain what's going on, giving you the play by play. I feel like I'm John Maddening this stuff. Um, before I drop in the developer, whoa, David, thank you for the 25. Um, I really, really appreciate it. Bri Mr. Brian Burks for 9.99. Is Brian, is that because I don't have 10K subs? It'll be $10 when I have 10K subs like you. All right, no, I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Um, also, congrats on your 10K subs, your channel is absolutely rocking it working with like 4x5 provia like awesome awesome stuff all right prince and the developer all right let's watch it come up i need to have a drum roll uh in my in my uh live stream software all right how are we looking oh there it is don't keep going that's like the the fear in the back of your mind when you when you print you're like yes 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 okay stop don't go any don't go any darker don't go any deeper this looks pretty cool so we did the same thing number four filter and you can see just those extra five seconds or so that we added dramatically darkened the background and gave us a little bit more separation here in the foreground without like the fear of a blown highlight this is looking great gonna give it a few more seconds Push my tray around a little bit. Okay, start dripping it off. I'm antsy, so I'm just like moving it all over the place. There we go. Slap it in the fix or in the stop. Use a different set of tongs in each bath so you don't cross contaminate. So these tongs don't go in. They they only go forward. They don't go backward. All right, in the fix. Excellence. Got this dropping in. I see the chat lighting up, so I'm going to talk to folks over in the chat here. I think I saw a super chat highlight come up. Michael, thank you so much for the 20. Oh, this is so, so much fun to do. Brian, it doesn't give you the option for 10 bucks. That's so weird. Anyway, well, I appreciate, yeah, I don't, I don't actually set the amounts, I don't think. Can I set the amounts? I don't know. I'm gonna have to have Laura look into this. Oh, very, very cool. Oh, Ash, uh, that was not a basic question at all. These, all questions are great. Like if my whole goal with this whole live stream thing is to inspire folks to get going with this. Now, live streaming this stuff is a whole different story. It's, it's prohibitively expensive and the gear to run this uh, is, is absurd, but to do the actual printing that, that you're seeing me do is less than a hundred bucks worth of stuff and a little bit of space. Like honestly, that little cove that I have set up, I'm gonna cut to it, right? That little cove that I have set up is just a set of little shelves. Uh, those are like $20 plastic shelves you can get at like a home improvement store. Uh, you can do this with a roller cart. Like it's actually not that bad to set up your own black and white darkroom space. Very, very primitive stuff. Um, what gave me the inspiration to do any of this stuff and even start printing uh, with more primitive tools uh, was actually one of the old Ed Weston documentaries. Uh, it, it's actually available on YouTube. You can, you can watch it for free. It's got a lot of cool classical music and you get to see Edward Weston being like the, the super artist that he is like printing out of what looks like, uh, <laughs> what looks like a closet and there's like cats and stuff in there. And uh, he's just like making amazing, amazing work. Oh, this print looks pretty, pretty cool. All right, I think it's gonna be the last one from this negative. Uh, I do wanna make a few more different negatives and see if I can make something really dynamic uh, without a filter. But this one, this one's, uh, this one's gonna go into the, the yes pile for, uh, for prints. So I'm gonna throw that into the rinse. See how we're doing here on, uh, on chats. Oh my goodness, lots of chats coming in. Um, Uh-oh, Kyle H. with the million-dollar question to Brian. Oh, not holding back. I appreciate it, Brian. Uh, let's see. LCAP. Been wanting to want to join one of these for a while. Well, welcome, LC. I appreciate you being here. Um, yeah, me too, David. Uh, Edward Weston, just, like, the, the amount of talent um, with, with, like, the most simple tools. Like, I think that's the thing that always grounds me about this type of photography. The greats were doing this stuff with with like nothing like i always try to ask myself like not not just the classic what would ansel adams do but like given the tools today 
what would be, what would the old, you know, what would the old masters of this craft do? How would they be, how would they be hosting an IG live? How would they be doing something from the dark room? Would they be doing this? Would they have already moved on to something else? That's the kind of stuff that keeps me up at night, but I'm always, always thinking about because it's, uh, you know, it's important to, to bar, like take ideas from the past, stew on them and try to combine them with things for the, from the future. Um, by the way, if you're just joining us, welcome to Large Format Live. I'm your host, Matt Marash. Uh, we're here in the darkroom at 400 West Rich, and I see that we have uh, still over 100 viewers. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we're doing we're doing black and white prints, and it's so much fun. Like, I get to share. This is the, honestly the stuff that I would be doing if nobody was watching. In fact, that's what I did for years and years and years. Uh, so I'm going to change out. Ooh, it is. The only thing is there is no air conditioning up here uh, at 400. So it is getting, it's getting steamy. I think m the microphone in a few minutes here is going to completely like suction onto my body. It is not, it is not cool in here. And there is a fan for like moving air, but I can't have that on because we're not going to have good audio if that happens. So uh, let's look at some new negatives. Oh, I brought an old Hocking Hills classic. I might want to do that. Ooh, that's a contrasty one. Okay. Let's see. What are some other... Oh, I have negatives out of sleeves already. Oh, no. Hold the phone. I know what we're printing, guys. I brought strudel negatives. Laura, this is for you. Thank you for wrangling the chat. We're going to make some strudel prints. Now, if you've tuned into Large Format Live before, you've seen me make strudel prints. Uh, strudel is my adorable red dapple dachshund. He is a bit of a jerk most of the time, but we love him. So we're making prints of him. Oh, yeah, I've got some other... Ooh, yeah, I've got some other nice Hawking Hill stuff. All right, so ho hold the presses. Stop the presses. We're making strudel prints. Going to cut the light. Grab some paper. Rock out a strudel print. I think this strudel print's gonna need. Mm, we'll go 10 seconds. Uh, by the way, most of these negatives were not tested prior to. That first one I printed was tested, and like one more that is buried in the stack somewhere was tested, but none of the rest of these are. Um, this is a negative made with a different film because why, why make life easy when you can make it hard? Oh, there he is. The weenie bean. Okay. Uh, this is a T-Max 100 negative, which is, uh, I think these print excellently. So we're going to push it nice and tight against the glass. There we go. All right. 10 seconds. Ready? One. And just going to dodge that area right there. And let's check it out. A little light popping in. Boom. Okay. Great. All right. Let's head over, see uh, see what action's going on. Eli, thank you so much for the 10. I super, super appreciate it. Strudel and Silver, he's a, he's a classy. You gotta, you gotta include Strudel. Um, David, thanks for the shout out for uh, for Art Mill. Uh, let us know where they're, they're located. Uh, Lore, I don't have paper long enough for Zill prints, so my apologies there. Um, let's shift over camera angle. Hopefully that's not too shaky for you guys. So print's going in, face side down, flip it up. And what I'm going to try to do is try to accelerate the paste while keeping, you know, while keeping stuff interactive with you guys. Oh, here he comes. The strood. Oh no, he's a little dark. He's a little dark. It's okay. We'll grab a contrast filter because we brought contrast filters. He's still looking, looking like a cute boy. You know what? We might just have to reduce exposure because that background isn't like gray, but this still looks beautiful. And what I also like is versus the alternative process prints we were making, it's a, it's a different look. So the negative and scanning a negative is just the starting point. So if you're just joining us, we have just exposed a piece of silver gelatin photographic paper to light specifically blue and green light for a controlled amount of time. We're throwing it in the developer and we're moving it around in this high pH environment for roughly a minute. After that minute, we're going to drip it off. We're going to throw it in our stop bath, which is an acid. So a lower pH environment. And after that time in the acid, 
about 10 seconds or so, we're gonna fix it. Now the fixer is there to remove the light sensitive silver, the leftover silver. If we don't fix it for long enough, it won't be light safe. So we're gonna flip Mr. Strudel up there. That might, that might be pretty good. I might just be, I might be a couple seconds too dark or play with the contrast. This is one I'm not gonna judge until the lights are on. And I may have to like open the door because it is, Okay, it's over 100 degrees in here right now. <laughs> uh, those trays are getting warm as well. Oh man, all right, so. Toasty strudel, I, 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 I totally agree. All right. Oh, Dave, uh, real dodging tools. The, the best dodging tools are the ones you make yourselves or use yourself. So I, I use, I cut up all sorts of extra stuff. So there's plenty of things that we end up throwing in the trash that are honestly fine. All right, checking to make sure no paper's out. Great. Whoops. Let's turn on the light. There he is. Whoops. This tray is not a great one for tongs. Whoops. There we go. Oh. There he is, Mr. Strudel. Honestly, I think I just need to back off like, mm, I don't know, like maybe one second. I mean, we're, we're like very, very close, but he's looking, he's looking really sharp. I forgot how sharp this negative was uh, because I was printing it in, um, you know, I was printing it on a, a toothier paper. paper uh, that isn't made out of plastic and has a silver gelatin on it usually has more texture and you lose detail when that happens. So I'm gonna drip this one off, throw it into the drink. And I need to actually get those rinsing in a little bit more running water. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and do a little chat management. And then we'll make a few more strudels and get going to another negative. How are we doing on time? Oh my goodness. We are nearly an hour and a half in. I wanna make sure I want to make sure we can do, uh, Lore, hold me to it, but I want to do a couple more strudel prints and then maybe one more negative. Um, and then we'll call it, then we'll call it a live stream. But I appreciate everybody hanging in there so far. This is large format live. We're up in the dark room space making traditional black and white silver gelatin prints on Ilford postcard paper. The Ilford postcard paper is one that's uh, on the back. It has some light back printing that allows me to slap a forever stamp on it and send it, send it to you at home. So if you want one of these prints, they will be chosen at random. I'm not gonna be preferential or anything. I'm just gonna make a whole bunch more prints once the live stream's done. But if you want one of your own prints like I made today, you can go to mirage.com slash prints. It's $10 for a postcard. They'll be chosen and mailed out at random. And hopefully they'll go out, uh, they'll probably be going out early next week. So uh, check that out. All right, how's the chat looking? How are we doing in there? Um, uh, Fena, question, postcard shipping only available? No, postcard shipping is available international because there is such a thing as international forever stamps and I already have a bunch purchased. So if you are an international customer, you will be, uh, you will be treated to prints as well. Only $2 shipping for international. Um, chopper, <laughs> an albumin on glass or a tone of strudel. Man, that is, that's a lot of work for a dachshund print, but I like it. I like where you're going with that. Um, let's see. Let's see. Edward, digital has left a lot of people wanting more. I very much agree. I think, uh, I think digital, I got burned out with digital pretty early on. And I think it's, um, yeah, it, it burned me out. And it was also at a time when digital was still kind of young. And I felt like the pictures I were, I was making looked like everybody else's pictures and they just didn't have that same oomph, that same magic. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little hack here, guys. I'm gonna make, uh, I'm gonna make expose two prints and, uh, and then process both at the same time. So I'm gonna make a strudel print here, frame up my boy, there he is. And remember, I need to take a few seconds off my time. If I don't press that glass down enough, it's not going to be nice and sharp. So that's a, that's a key factor. 
right. Dodge him real quick. Cool. All right. Okay, that's our first prints. I'm just gonna hide this down below so it doesn't get exposed. Do our second print, and this way we can get, and, and you can do the same thing. If you have, um, there is a little plastic uh, black box you can purchase called a paper safe. It allows you to not have to open the box on and off. Um, I don't have a paper safe in the dark room right now. I do have some at home. I probably should have brought one, but uh, those are a great tool for making sure, uh, yeah, you can make, you know, multiple prints. All right, we're going to go eight, eight seconds. Ready? One and right, I'm going to dodge them real quick. Oh, hey, we got a soundtrack. Hopefully this, uh, this, uh, there's a wedding going on below us. <laughs> All sorts of events going on on a Sunday afternoon. Who would have thought? Um, hopefully I don't get DMCA'd. <laughs> Copyright strike because there was a DJ in the background. That would be not fun. All right, let's see. Where's the prints? All right, I got the first print. Where did I hide that second one? There it is. Okay. So I'm going to run both of these into my bath, and I'm going to... All right. Change our camera angle. There we go. So I've got two prints going to go in and I'm just going to flip them. Uh, I don't care so much about the back, but I do care about the face. So flipping them back to back, just like this. Here he comes. One strudel and two strudels. All right, there we go. One strudel, two strudels, one strudel, two strudels. There he is. All right, so those look good. Right where I want him to be. Yeah, just that maybe, maybe an eight second exposure with a one second dodge right on his face. So dodging is putting my hand in front of an area. Um, when, whenever you see somebody dodging and burning, one key factor to dodge and burn is you have to keep moving. If you just hold your hand over an area while the exposure is going, uh, you can get haloing or like the shape of it burned into the paper. That's why you have to keep things uh, moving. You, everybody has their own thing. They'll shimmy, they'll move their hands around, they'll have specific fancy tools for it. I'm not about that. I'm pretty DIY. Heck, I'm using a seven watt bulb dangling from a pipe hooked up to my Gray Lab timer to expose this stuff. So you don't need fancy tools. The fanciest stuff I have is to, well, help bring this stuff to you guys at home and all over the world. So if you're, if you're somebody from, you know, not down the street here in Columbus, Ohio, I appreciate you tuning in, taking time out of your Sunday to experience, experience the magic of the dark room. So thank you so much. All right, we're gonna go in here into the fix. Flip this around. All right, Strudel needs a minute in the fix here. All right, doing a little chat management now, heading over to the chat. What's going on, folks? Philip, thanks for tuning in, appreciate you. Uh, <laughs> Joe B1, nice, That's, I like that screen name. Uh, Joe, um, I have thought about uh, dabbling with daguerreotype. I would really need to take a workshop with someone who like really, really knows his stuff. Uh, my darkroom roommate, Stephen Takis, actually did a darkroom workshop a few years back with, um, with, with um, oh shoot, Spagnoli. I can't remember his, uh, his first name, um, but he took, he took a workshop with him and actually took his portrait. And that, I would just need to work with a contemporary uh, daguerreotype practitioner. And you need a lot of, lot of safety equipment. You need to pretty much have a full uh, formulary lab going to, uh, to make it worth it for daguerreotypes because that stuff involves like fumed mercury and gilding with gold, like all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, let's see, how's the, how's the chat? Whoa, Ash from Bangladesh, that is pretty amazing. Thanks for stopping by. Um, Devin, I appreciate that. I, I love being filled with, uh, with Tony Stark, made these prints in a cave with a box of scraps. Uh, I love that. In fact, that's one of Lauren's favorite lines from all of the Marvel movies. Oh, there he is, Mr. Strudel. Now, I don't want to make this just a, pr a Strudel print sale. We are going to have other prints, but there he is, the weenie bean. So sharp, so cute. 
Now these are eight by 10 contact, well, eight by 10 negatives contact printed on four by six RC portfolio paper, meaning it's, you know, it's not a real eight by 10, but it's, it's fine. They're, they're nice prints and you can pick one up yourself. You can go to mirage.com slash prints and uh, prints made on the live stream here will be available for $10. They're chosen at random, um, but if, you, uh, if you're one of the early ones, you can let me know which print you want in the, uh, in the order notes and I'll try to, try to accommodate. All right, let's see. How's the chat looking? How are we doing? Oh, John, thanks for the compliment. I appreciate it. From, oh, Cape Town, wow. From, oh, greetings from Sweden. Thanks for stopping by. Oh, Michael Kenna, 35. Yeah, he's, I mean, contemporary master, uh, Michael Kenna. And just like the, he's, he's created such a style for himself with like that simplistic, uh, that simplistic look of the, the, the kind of like use of negative space and stark black and white. I love, love, love his work. Okay. Enough talking. I got to get printing. I need some. I need some variety of negatives. Now, I did bring a negative here uh, from my Ohio Uninterrupted series. If you go to mirage.com and check out my galleries, or you can go to flickr.com/photos/matt4226. If you ever see Matt4226 online, that's uh, that's my old screen name. I've used that since I was like seven years old or something. The 4226 stands for DBZ. Um, I was, you know, initially for today's live stream, I was planning on uh, taking a toy uh, scouter from the series uh, Dragon Ball Z uh, and crushing it to uh, to add to the meme of it's over 9,000. Uh, for those of you at home, that's a vintage meme from the anime Dragon Ball Z and the bad uh, the bad initial dub of it. But anyway, um, I looked up the price of that that toy scouter, and it turns out that this thing I bought in Japan in 2009 is worth like it's worth like four hundred dollars so i'm not gonna crush it on the live stream today <laughs> i was gonna like literally gonna go over nine thousand and like break it uh but that's that's very very niche uh people that want the, the crossover between uh weebs people who enjoy anime way too much and people who do film photography i don't think there's a lot of crossover there anyway um hawking hills negative i have no idea what it's gonna print at let's call it 10 seconds and let it rip whoop all right, here we go. I'm gonna do a little dodge. Da, 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 da. Dodge it in here. Right there. Cool. All right, let's see how this 10 second tester looks. Now, I'm not like completely shooting in the dark. Um, over time, you do just get a little bit better at judging a negative. There's still some times where I just have no clue. I look at a negative and I say, oh, this will be perfect for such and such. And then I do it and it just sucks. But you get a feeling, you get an intuition for printing negatives, uh, whether or not something's going to look good in a certain process or, or come out well. So in the drink, into the developer, and we're going to let it print out. Now this one is a vertical orientation, which uh, depending on which purists you talk to, is a cardinal sin. How dare you do a portrait of a landscape? Like, it's fine. Now this is from a, a now kind of viral uh, location in the Hocking Hills. Um, this is called Robinson Falls. And uh, if you look up, if you Google Robinson Falls, there's all these amazing like color and HDR photos. And uh, the truth is that falls is like tinier than the shelf that I have all this stuff being uh, printed on. Wow, this is like, this straight print is coming out pretty sweet. I am really enjoying how that is looking. Get a closer look while it's still cooking. Oh, this looks really nice. Rocks, watered trees. It's my MO. It's kind of classic stuff I love. All right, a couple more seconds. Four, three, two, one. Into the drink. There we go. It's looking good. Four, three, two, one. All right, into the fix. Start my timer again. Timer ran out, which means I've been here too long, but that's all right. I'm going to flip this print so you guys can have something to look at and then I'll uh, do a little chat management. How's the chat looking? Oh man. Okay. <laughs> Laura doesn't want me to break the, sc the scouter. I disagree. I want to break it. Uh, <laughs> oh man. Very, very cool. 
All right, Laura says I should do more of this waterfall. I'm inclined to believe her. Um, let's see. Ash, thanks for the comment. I really like this print too. Um, yep, long dogs, rock to our trees. That's my MO. Love it. Um, Colton, um, if it was not evident at all by the hair, I'm a huge anime fan. Vegeta's my literal favorite character. Um, I'm actually just, I'm actually just a 12 year old boy. Like I've never, uh, I've never grown up, never will. Always going to be reading my manga, watching anime excitedly. In fact, when I go home today, after I take a giant nap after this live stream, I am going to be watching anime and reading manga because that's what I do here at age 35. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at this print. Oh man, this is, yeah, we're gonna make a couple more of this, this postcard for sure. This is looking, this is looking clean. Now it is like a little bit, just like a smidge flatter than I want it to. I might try printing this with a number three filter with a little bit more exposure time. So we'll call it like 16 with a number three and see if we can just pop that contrast a little bit more. Maybe not, maybe, maybe flat's the way to go. I don't know. We're gonna drop this in the drink and uh, and get printing again. All right, sweet. I think I think the talk of anime has completely murdered the chat, guys. We're actually here in the uh, the dark room at 400 West Rich, and we are making black and white silver gelatin dark room prints. The the original type of black and white print. Um, very cool. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree, Elsie. I think a little bit more contrast is the way to go. So I'm gonna change the camera angle, dip that down, and we're gonna head, uh, we're gonna head over to our, our printy station. We're gonna get our number three ready. I'm gonna get this one to sing. Now I didn't bring a number two contrast filter uh, because the type of negatives I'm printing with, these are negatives made with a developer called Pyrocat HD. Pyrocat HD uh, generally makes very, very flat negatives um, and the it has a stain. It's a developer that doesn't just make silver metal, it also puts this tanning kind of stain on the negative, which will also do some interesting things to the uh, to the contrast. Um, it'll yeah, it'll just kind of filter out uh, more of that blue light. So lighter filtration is not usually needed, but heavier filtration is encouraged on Pyrocat negatives. So I'm going to hold my number three right in front. We're going to go 15 seconds. Got a little bit of dodge. There we go. Doesn't get any any simpler than this, guys. I got a seven watt bare bulb. I'm literally holding a piece of plastic with with some color, a little color gel, in front of the light and exposing it. And you guys get to see this live. That's this is what large format live is all about: experiencing the dark room from afar. This is still a dream come true for me, being able to do this kind of stuff for you guys at home. Um, it's the magic of the darkroom. I think even people that don't connect with photography feel the magic of a print coming up. All right, here we go. Throw in the drink, flop it around. Flop it around, watch it come up. All right, let's take a look. Oh, here it comes. Oh, still upside down. Okay. Yes, the number three. This is the one to do. All right, so chances are if you go to mirage.com slash prints and you order a, uh, a postcard print from today's live stream, I'm guessing the majority of them are going to be uh, this composition as well as, um, as well as strudel prints, which, hey, who doesn't like strudel prints? Uh, if you are a cat lover, my deepest apologies. I don't have any cats and nobody to photo no cats to photograph on large format. Oh yeah, this one's, this one's got the pop. This one's got the contrast. I'm glad I brought the number three and the number four. I knew I was working with a variety of negatives. So the reason I'm using these contrast filters is to change the spectral response. Well, I'm not changing it. I'm just modifying what color of light is hitting the black and white silver gelatin paper. So normally, uh, if I just hit it with the, the raw light, there's gonna be a certain amount of blue light and a certain amount of green light that hits this paper. And if I wanna control that more meticulously, I can do so by throwing a filter in front of it. And these filters are usually uh, a reddish or orange in color because those, well, really magenta and orange in color because magenta is the opposite of green. 
and your orange is going to be the opposite of blue. And those are going to help negate some of those wavelengths, which will create different values in the print. So with black and white, all we have is contrast. All we have is this value. Oh yeah, so get a wet hand here. This is the print we made before, and that's the print we made after. And I'll try to hold them up equally to the light uh, once the lights go up. But I think the number three filter is the way to go. All right, how is everybody doing in the chat? Um, yeah, Laura loves the uh, the Hasselblad. She's real, real big on that. I know, Edward. Uh, I my my inner Edward Weston is is I'm not the real deal because I don't have um, I don't have any cats going on. <laughs> okay, very cool. Uh, how's the rest of the chat doing? Oh, yeah, Patrick, uh, an enlarger would just barely fit in here on a good day. And with all this camera gear, I don't even know if I'd be able to, uh, to throw in a, uh, an enlarger on top of all of this extra stuff. All right, let's see how this print is looking. Oh, yes, we definitely got a lot more pop in the lighter and darker areas. So uh, just adding that contrast filter, surprise, surprise, gave us some more contrast. Didn't do anything to the, the waterfall, but it really did some stuff to uh, the rocks over here, the deep blacks over here. And we even have like this kind of brighty corner right here. I don't know how I feel about that one, but we'll, uh, we can, we can address that a little bit. I'm just going to drip that in the water and then I'm going to hold both prints up so you can see the before and after. So, uh, hashtag no filter versus filter. So, and they're pretty evident once you hold them up together. So we've got no filter filter. So in black and white darkroom printing, the contrast slider are the filters. This is a variable contrast paper, meaning you can add these filters to change that response. And definitely the number three filter is the way to go. All right. I'm going to make one more of these and then we're going to wrap it up. And you guys, I might, uh, I might not even turn on the rest of the lights so you guys can't see how incredibly sweaty I am right now. This is, this is uh, probably the sweatiest I've been <laughs> photographically. Oof. Okay. Um, hey, we still have 92 folks. Thanks to everybody for tuning in. We're at the tail end here of, uh, of Large Format Live. I'm here in the dark room at 400 West Rich making black and white silver gelatin prints and I forgot to change my camera angle. All right, very cool. By the way, this is, uh, this is a bit of a production. Um, I don't recommend live streaming by yourself, <laughs> uh, but we can't really fit a whole lot of folks in here. I do have Lore uh, working uh, work in the chat remotely. Thank you so much. Uh, everybody give a, give a shout out to Lore in the chat. She's been like the real M MVP wrangling everybody, throwing links down. So I appreciate you, Lore, so, so much for doing that. Uh, glossy side out. By the way, I didn't mention that on the print. Um, if you're looking for the emulsion side on your black and white silver gelatin paper, it's the shiny side. So we can even see it shining versus those lights, but it's okay. Those are, those are safe lights. Well, relatively safe. Every safe light has a time. All right, let's go right. Yeah, I'm going to change my composition here just to try and get rid of some of those weird corners I was getting before. That was part of the negative and come on. There we go. Pop that on there. Got my number three, 15 seconds. Great. Oh, this is gonna be cool. All right, I just exposed through the negative onto the portfolio paper, the postcard paper, my exposure. We formed a latent image. Let's get it into the developer. Change out our camera angle. Let's rotate our camera back. Come on. Oh man, okay, there we go. Good. Slap it in and flip it up. All right. Moment of truth. Always, I think another part of it too, there's always like that little pity or stomach feeling like, is this gonna be the time that like something completely off the wall that you didn't see coming happens and like it ruins the picture but no like there it is oh such a good feeling to watch the print come up in the tray i i wouldn't trade these moments uh for anything 
but I will trade these prints for uh, for ten dollars. Okay, that was that was a really bad segue. I promise not to do any more segues like that. All right, um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stay quiet for a second and let my developing finish out. Okay, but no, uh, this is special stuff. I'm so happy to be able to share this with you guys at home and around the world. Thank you so much for tuning in to Large Format Live. Uh, if you like this, be sure to get subscribed because you know we do. Uh, well, we don't do stuff as crazy as this. Usually we reserve the extra crazy for Large Format Live. But on Large Format Friday, we talk about all things large format photography, but the more I go, the more topics I find there are like holes for in the market. Like people want, they have questions about, you know, all these different things. And I think, um, I think as things go, we may start seeing more non-large format content on the channel, but we're not touching large format Friday because that's what LFF is all about. Each and every Friday, there's a new episode where we talk about something large format photography. Okay, let's hit up the chat a couple last times and see how uh, see how we're doing. Oh yes, uh, Laura, thank you for uh, pointing that out. Uh, if you're an LFF sustaining member, someone who's contributing to the channel on a monthly basis, uh, thank you so much. Th this is how I can have this stuff going uh, when I buy paper, uh, rent out <laughs> rent out camera equipment, um, buy gas to go all these uh, amazing locations all over Ohio. Yeah, it's okay. I feel good saying amazing locations in Ohio. I, I used to be a very negative, like, oh, I can only take good pictures if I go traveling out west. But no, you can take good pictures in your own backyard. All right, let's see how everybody's doing. Oh, Colton, thanks for the appreciation. Ash, thank you so much. LC, uh, good luck with the Intrepid. I, uh, I wish you all of the best luck. Chopper. Uh, now, building a dark room in a kitchen could be a little chancy because, well, you still have to cook food in that kitchen. Um, if it's a modular dark room, one where you can roll things in and out, that's a different story. But uh, don't uh, don't go making the significant other really, really mad. I think one reason that Laura is uh, happy with the <laughs> the work I'm doing is because it's not taking place in the house. If this dark room stuff touched the house, um, I don't think she'd be managing the chat right now. <laughs> Oh yeah, there we go. Number three filter all day long. Uh, we can do maybe a little bit of burn in this area right here. That composition's looking cool. We got these little triangles and nice leading lines. Oh yeah, this looks pretty freaking cool. All right. Oh, Dave, uh, that is a that is a great question. What format of donation gives me the most bang for the buck? Uh, becoming an LFF sustaining member, honestly, uh, is the is the biggest. Uh, initially, I was looking at Patreon and all this other stuff, and um, I don't know. I, I didn't like what I was seeing out on the market. Eventually, I may get to the point where I, I can't juggle this stuff myself, and I may need to go to a service like Patreon. But for the time being, um, I'm going through uh, the LFF sustaining member program, which is um, which is a, uh, a PayPal-based thing. So, um, yeah, you can go to mirage.com slash memberships to find out uh, more details on all of that good stuff. Now, I'm going to try and change my... The lights are on, and I want to change my camera angle here. Uh-oh, hopefully the battery doesn't die. But if it does, that's okay. Um, I'm going to... We're just going to close this out. So, uh, final, I don't know, three-minute warning, two-minute warning. Ooh. Oh my goodness. It's, uh, it's a lot brighter now. And let's change the camera angle. There we go. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, who, so much to everybody who tuned in for today's Large Format Live. It means a lot to me that you're joining me here. You're taking time out of your day, your weekend, uh, to watch me do all this crazy stuff in, uh, in the black and white darkroom. But I want to share that experience of large format photography because I think it's important. I think it's worth, uh, it's worth going through the extra effort uh, to show you guys how this is done. We use really, really inexpensive materials. In fact, I'm going to go grab uh, some of the stuff to kind of recap what we did today. I'll show some prints. Uh, we'll do some uh, last minute love in the chat and then we'll, then we'll head out. So we worked with super primitive tools today, guys. 
super, super primitive. So we were making prints using a bare bulb. This teeny tiny little seven watt Kodak bulb was all we needed to make exposures on black and white silver gelatin paper. We contact printed a negative. We can, oh yeah, you can really see the stain of my Pyrocat negatives now. It's got that really olive stain to it. We exposed that negative onto sheets of Ilford multi-grade four RC portfolio glossy. Who that's a million words, but this is postcard paper, which generates a really neat postcard print. And you got to see those develop live. Really easy materials. It's not too bad to set this stuff up yourself at home. And I recommend trying it if you have, uh, have the space or have uh, a place nearby maybe where you can take a class or take a workshop. Um, if you are like regional, local, or do want to make the trek, I do teach uh, black and white darkroom workshops. So that is a thing if you want to learn from me. But honestly, you can glean a lot just from uh, the replay on today's episode. All right, I'm going to take a few last questions. Sorry, I just got to move my negatives out of the way so I don't destroy any of the precious stuff. Um, I'm going to take a, la a few, some few last questions. I'm going to change the camera over to the trays so we can see, well, not just my mug the entire time. Oh, uh, Okanis uh, asks, what kind of gloves am I working with? I'm working with just some blue nitrile gloves. In fact, these are some new ones I just picked up today. Uh, they're biodegradable and they're actually completely safe for darkroom chemicals. I've used these, uh, well, with Stop Bath Fixer Developer and they do well. These are rated for um, low pH for like acetic acid, which is what Stop Bath is. So uh, yeah, they work pretty well. And they were cheaper than regular gloves and they're like slightly more eco-friendly, which is, is pretty cool. Um, Okay, let's see. How is everybody doing? Okay, final final chat questions. Um, Daryl, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate you. Um, oh, Fenna, I know. I am like, I'm bummed. Actually, let me move to the big camera. I am bummed that the new Ilford Portfolio materials doesn't have the postcard back print to it. I felt like that was the reason I wanted to buy that paper was that it's got all of this cool stuff to it. Um, so we're pretty much stuck with kind of DIYing a postcard. Really, if you in the U.S., if you slap a stamp on it, uh, they're going to consider it a postcard if it's four by six or five by seven. Once it gets larger than that or heavier than that, it's no longer applicable for that type of uh, of mail like the uh the slower first class uh, postcard mail but that's what keeps the cost low if you want to pick up your very own postcard like we made on today's live stream oh there's strudel okay this is actually a pretty good print I, I'm liking it now. You can head to mirage.com slash prints and for $10 US plus a dollar shipping US, $2 shipping international, you can pick up one of the prints that we did on live stream. All proceeds go to funding the show and all of this craziness uh, that we put on here. So thank you so much for stopping by. Um, all right, La all right. I, I said last time. Uh, da, 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 da. Just out of curiosity, have you worked with Obsidian Aqua? Uh, Ash, um, Obsidian Aqua was a developer I used a long time ago. I might start using it again just to kind of change things up because it was a pretty aggressive developer. It was a developer that had, it's very similar to Pyrocat HD. It's a catacall based developer. Um, it's, uh, it's more aggressive. It just has less restraining agents. So if w without careful observation, you will get crazy, crazy contrasty negatives. So just be careful if you do use that stuff. All right. Very, very cool. All right. I think that's going to, I think this is going to do it. We are, okay, yeah, we're just short of two hours. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. If you subscribe to the channel, you're one of the over 9,000 people that subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much. I really appreciate all of your contributions. Super big thanks to all of our LFF sustaining members where you can contribute monthly to support the stuff that you see going on here. Or if you just want to chime in once, 
Toss in 10 bucks plus shipping and you can grab yourself a postcard from today's print. For all those details, you can head to mirage.com slash memberships and mirage.com slash prints. Oh yeah, it's also a photo website. So you can like check out, you know, all sorts of pretty photos and cool stuff. So thank you so much again for stopping by. I appreciate you spending a few hours with me here today in the black and white dark room. Hopefully you got to share, hopefully you felt some of the magic that I was feeling uh, collectively with everybody while making prints. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you next week for more large format Friday on Friday. So we'll see you then.